I'm delighted to say we are joined now by Dillian White and Richard Riakpo. Very good afternoon to you both, good gentlemen. Afternoon, good Thanks afternoon. for joining us. Now, Dillian, I'll start with you. Um, 2019, a tough old year for you, but it must have been so pleasing to end on a positive note with that win over Marius Vak. Yeah, you know, um, it is up and down year. You know, I won the WBC World Championship also, as well as um, ups and downs, and then um, had a long layoff, and then... Um, Beat Marius Wacker is a very, very experienced campaigner. You know, obviously, it wasn't the best place physically and mentally, but I got the job done, you know, and obviously, it showed that even though it was two stones overweight here, um, I said a lot of drive and a lot of desire, and I won nine out of ten rounds. Mm. Yeah, it was, a, it was a good performance. Yeah, it was and, an aggressive one. But. Yeah, <laughs> and I, but I suppose after the year you've had, there was just a sense of relief to, to get through the fight, to win it. Just tell us a little bit uh, about what it was like, because we know it was a tough old year and, yeah, and there's a lot no. of talk, isn't there, about mental well-being and mental health. When no, you're in a you know, situation listen, like no, that, how difficult you're was You're on the top of the world, you get knocked off because of some... Mm some nonsense you know but um you know um it's hard but I'm a, I'm a very very mentally and physically tough person even even though I'm like that by nature it was still difficult very difficult but I had a lot of good people around me who helped me and a lot of people believed in me and um you know and they helped me to get through it. and then obviously I used the gym as a bit of a distraction mm -hmm. and my dogs as well you know and <laughs> kids and stuff you know um you know so yeah it, what dogs have you got I got three dogs three mastiffs I got three big dogs yeah and they're pretty loyal dogs, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. You know, I, lo I love dogs <laughs> no more than people. Yeah. I love dogs more than people, <laughs> you. you know. Well, well, sadly, you haven't brought them in with you, but you yeah. have brought in some, some other props for us, some, yeah. some, some Christmas presents. I mean, you've got there Deontay Wilder's WBC belt, sort of identical replica of, so well, this is to... It, it's the same. They just made two of them. It's the same, so it's the, the same belt. Right, OK. They just made why, two why of them. They, why, 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 do, why do they make two? Why do they, I thought there was only just they one. They know belt. I should write for the WBC right, WBC okay. belt. Right, OK. <laughs> OK, so but this, this, this is the thing, isn't it? That you, you are the mandatory challenger, but where are we at in terms of a, a world title fight? being lined up, didn't it? Deontay Wilder's still being a coward and still running, as usual, you know. I've been number one challenger for 800 days, you know, and, and I'm still number one challenger, and rightly mm. so. I've fought more top 15 and top 10 opponent than he done as a champion, you know. Obviously, DC Ine is a good champion. He's got, a punch, he's got punch power, as we see, just see there, but, you know, Luz Ortiz is a million years old, you know. <laughs> Well, look, yeah, I, he's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we can see what he can do, but let's let's bring in Richard now, then. And Richard, you, you're being managed by Dylan yeah. uh, at the moment. And um, how important is it to have that kind of guidance for you to have someone like Dylan, who's who's been there and done it at this stage in your career? And, and just tell us how valuable that's been. I think it's, it's listen. It's so important. Like I'm, I count myself as a, a very blessed individual to have somebody in the in the boxing industry and that's also competing at the highest level mm. to be able to give me the advice that you know that I, that would do me you know great greatly you know jumping in the ring mm. um, I've seen him I've been in a in a in a back room with him when he's in um, preparing for his, his fights headlining shows on sky pay-per-view so it's kind of just kind of kind of prepared me for what's to come in the future. Mm. So when I had my fight on the on the 19th of December for the British title, it's like I already knew what to expect. I knew how it was going to be. I knew about how um, the, the referees and everybody would come to the room and give me some instructions and just the, just the, the basic kind of, you know. Oh, so this, this is the fight itself. I mean, tell us a little bit about it because it, it is one of the, the titles you've brought in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you took a little bit of damage to your hand, didn't you? So tell us yeah, about that. And what's you know, that? I did it, took a little bit of damage, just damaged um, some dislocated metacarpals. And, a little uh, bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I, listen, I, I, I want to show Jack Massey a lot of respect. I don't really like to bring up, you know, these little these these injuries because at the end of the day, you know, boxing is boxing. It comes with a package. You're gonna get injured and stuff, and you just have to continue fighting on and and move on. And Dylan, from your perspective, uh, it's not often you see someone who's in the height of their career taking someone under their under their arm and and looking after them. How important is it for you to be guiding someone like Richard at this it, stage? It is very important because when I was coming up, I helped a lot of people out, um, training, aspiring, preparing for a big fight. No one helped me, mm. and I was when I, I was coming, I see all these guys. They was helping me preparing for a fight. I was in the gym. There was good fighters, but no one wasn't giving them the break. You know, so I said to myself, I said, um, you know what, 
I want to be different from these guys. I want to, because a lot of guys are scared to be the attention isn't just on them. I'm not like that, you know. I want to help these guys. I want to give these guys opportunity, you know. And every time I fought, I put my own fighters on the undercards as well. I manage him. I have a few other guys. I have um, Richard, Alan Babbage, um, Fabio Wardley, Pesta, Chris Congo. There's a few more guys. So I wanted to give them an opportunity for them to take part in the big shows as well and get the experience that Richard say. For his last fight was a main event, but because he'd been fighting on my undercards and been to the press conference with me, been in camp sparring, it mm. prepped him and built him, so yeah. he was well ahead of where he should have been, you know, yeah. considering the amount of fights it's, he's It's great had. to have that stable, isn't it? To, yes. you know, all those positive influences all, all working together. We, we're a little bit short on time, we've got about 30 seconds left, Dillian, but we've got Wilder Fury in February, we've got Anthony Joshua who's got his belts back as well. So what is your take on 2020, the year ahead? Just tell us very briefly what you expect you know, to see. You know, firstly, I want to fight three times this year, mm. you know, pending injuries, but I think this year's going to be a good year. Unfortunately, we're not going to see an undisputed fight this year, which is a bit of a shame. Mm. And we got, at least we got Wilder Fury rematch. So let's see how it goes. And um, let's see what Joshua does next. Mm. You know, but I'm, I'm up for fighting all of them. I've been trying to fight all of them. My name has been mixed <laughs> with all of them. Well, you know, hopefully, it's hopefully top four, we it's get, top we, four we get pen on paper that. fairly soon. Yeah. This is an absolute pleasure to speak to you, to you both. Thank you so much, Dylan. Thank, thank you very much. Well. Thank you. Great to see you both.